Okay. The idea of perfect pitch. So in order to have perfect pitch, it's this idea that kind of, you know, that an A is an A and this is what it sounds like. Or for instance, you might be able to sing a song in the right key without hearing the song. And I guess that means that somewhere in our brain, there is a reference for frequency when it comes to audio. And we're comparing it, kind of like tuning tuning notes on a guitar. I don't know if we've got any guitar players here or like stringed instrument players where we, where we have to tune something. And we, we play our reference note that this is our correct note. And then we play our other note and it kind of beats against it till they line up. And it's just like, okay, that's in tune. We apparently, some of us, or if we're trained enough, we have that in our brains and we would call that perfect pitch. We have something similar with vision. Uh, everybody can see a green elephant currently. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay. We have something with vision, but we don't have the equivalent of perfect pitch with vision, meaning that we don't have a color reference in our brain, or at least we don't appear to have a color reference in our brain. We, we see color based on being in the moment. And if that were to do with sound, we would call that relative pitch. So re relative pitch, and, and I, I might be going sideways for you guys with using audio. I like to use audio sometimes just because it's, it's another sense. And I, I can maybe explain it a little better. Uh, a perfect fifth would be like the, the sound we know of as Star Wars. ba ba that interval there would be a perfect pit, uh, a perfect fifth, <laughs> maybe my not my version might not be, but most people like 99% of people have relative pitch. Some have perfect pitch. Apparently no one has perfect color. We have no reference for color memory, but we have relative color memory, meaning that in the moment when we compare something to something else, we can see that something's wrong. And so if I were to go in and change the colors of our elephant, I can dial them in based on some gray in the background. And it's just suddenly oh, that looks better. And so our goal is always to make things pleasing. And there's a reason that it's not perfect. I, I always like to give a little bit of science Let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and discard that. Uh, we'll start with, I. Uh, you know what? I shall start with a camera. Everybody seen their chip inside a camera? I, I've seen mine many, many times. Uh, I am always amazed by the thing. Uh, there's, no, there's no test after this, uh, but do we know what a, a, a buyer filter is? Uh, it, so... It's this little mosaic pattern here. It's basically little filters in front of a chip. And the design is quite literally based on our eyeballs. And so if you remember back to, I don't know, grade nine science, uh, for some of us, that was a long time ago. Grade nine science, we talked about uh, rods and cones in our eyes. And we have cones. And that see color. They're little color filters in front of our eyeballs. And we've done the same with chips. In, in fact, uh, the chip on your camera only shoots black and white. A raw, a raw image on your camera only is, is only black and white. There's no color information. The color is interpolated. And our eyeballs work the same. We, we probably don't actually see color but we can determine things by frequency and we separate them in some interesting way, a little like this. There's one massive difference between the way a chip works. So this is the, this is the chip. And over the top of this is if you've got, uh, I think probably most of us are somewhere around 30 megapixels average on our camera. That means you've got 30 million little photo sites with 30 million little filters. And 
I don't know about you, but that blows my mind. Uh, my, my current Sony camera, 62 million, uh, 62 million little filters in front of 62 million little photo sites. No idea how that works. This is arguably more accurate than our eyeballs. Here's where things go wrong with our eyeballs and why we're never going to get a, a correct white balance, only pleasing. And that is that back here is our retina. We can think of it as an, an area that picks up uh, light frequency, transmits it to our brain. But it turns out there's an area called the fovea. It works, it's like this little bump back here. And it's this tiny little section. And believe it or not, that little area there is where the cones are. We, we have some cones scattered around, but basically if you wanna see color in full color and full resolution, that's how much of your retina you use. And that equates to, let me measure my thumb. My, if you, if you were to hold your thumb up, your thumbnail at arm's distance is about the amount of color information of your fovea. That's the amount, that's kind of the area in your, in your field of vision that your fovea is giving information to. And that's where all our color comes from. And from there, our brain kind of interpolates with memory. And this can go really wrong. I'll give you a couple of examples. This this will get this will get more fun, and we'll, we'll be happier as we go along. But I just want to make sure that uh, we get rid of the idea that there is such a thing as right color. Anybody seen this illusion before? This is one of my favorites. Uh, in this one here, this square here, square B, and square A, are exactly the same level of gray. We're not even talking color at this point. Those are just the same gray. Anybody here see the same gray? Because I sure don't. And it turns out that our, our brains um, override our eyeballs. And so based on experience, our experience tells us, so it's kind of like artificial intelligence, our, except for it's actual. Our actual intelligence would tell us that's a checkerboard. And this here, is a cylinder that's blocking light. And that, so these therefore have to be different. I wonder if I can click on them. Look at that. 120 all round and 120 all round. Blows my mind. Cannot, cannot figure that out. So that's the bad news with grays is our, is our brain interprets stuff. And we, I, I've heard some people tell me that they can see that. I can't argue with them because I don't have their experience. I can tell you that I'm pretty sure if I were to find a way of testing people, it's safe to say that we can't see that. Um, and of course, it gets worse with color. These two, this, this Rubik's Cube here, this yellowish square down here, Oh, we got more people sitting there. And this brownish square up here are exactly the same color. Again, like blows my mind. Anybody here claim to see the same color? Because <laughs> man, I don't. That is, oops, I just white balanced that. That's kind of like a orangey yellow on my end. And that is definitely a dark brown. And if I put the cursor uh, over the top of that, let's see, oops, and not white balance. There we go. 132, 65, 14. Oh, it's going to make a liar out of me. If I get it in a it's noise. It, it, they're very, very close though. And we'll see it in this. Anybody seen this dress? Anybody remember that from the internet? That's a no? Okay. We got some no's. That's awesome. Uh, what color is this dress? Can you write it down? in the, what color dress do you see on your screen? If you could write it down in the chat, uh, this will be an interesting one. We'll get everybody in on this one. What, what color, what color dress do you see? Two tones. Uh, all right, Gary's got a white and brown, surely white and gold. Uh, white and gold, brown and white. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jay, uh, let's see. Chris Rogers, you see blue. 
Uh, oh, uh, Deborah, you see blue and white. What the what? How can some people be seeing a white and brown dress and others be seeing a blue, uh, blue and gray? Arnold, uh, seeing a blue, gray, and gold dress. Yeah, I, I, that's what I see, Arnold. For everybody seeing a blue dress, and I'm, I'm, I can promise you there is no Zoom tricks. Oh, Ali somehow got knocked out. We'll put her, bring her back in. There, there's no tricks going on here. Uh, there's no Zoom tricks. We just see that differently. And it's crazy to me. Some people will look at that and see, I, for me, I see a blue dress that's got uh, uh, some noisy blacks that, uh, you know, head towards metallic. Uh, lavender gray. Yeah. Uh, most people, uh, most people hear this. That's very interesting to me. Most people here are seeing a white and gold dress. I can tell you that I once saw a white and gold dress and I was trying to figure out what it was that people were seeing. And I was working and working at this. And as I flicked through like Photoshop uh, settings to, you know, as I was adjusting it, all of a sudden I saw a white and gold dress. And I was like, where did that come from? And then I saw it morph back to blue and black in front of my eyes. And honestly, wanted wanted me to make, uh, made me want to vomit. I, I felt like sick to my stomach. And it was just the, the nausea of like something like changing right in front of my eyes. Peter, blue and gray. Yeah. So super interesting. I would suggest to you guys that uh, we don't have to worry about this too much. This one seems to be an oddball and it's only probably going to happen with blues. I, I don't know if you've heard that. Uh, sorry, I keep on looking at you guys over on the other screen. It probably looks weird. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that in the past, we never had the color blue. Color blue was developed as we arrived with dye. We got dyes. No, not sure I 100% buy into that. But there is something special about blues. One of those things is that when we looked at the picture of the fovea, just about all of our sensors in in our fovea are red and green. There's hardly any blue sensors in there. Uh, blue is like a smattering, 2% blue. And then there's a bunch of blue scattered around our retina. For some reason, red and green, very important to us uh, biologically. And blue, not so much. And that probably has something to do with what's going on here. The other part of it, uh, and this is a little confusing. If I were to print this out, we would see uh, a lot of the people that see white and gold would not see white and gold anymore. And it seems to have something to do with our, our screens being uh, color balanced for 6,500K uh, blue light, basically, uh, like, a, like a, sun, a sunshine blue light. And as we, as we warm that down to a, a paper white, uh, that changes for most people. Uh, Robert writes, likely white and gold, but appearing blue due to backlight causing underexposure to the dress. Uh, yeah, I, there's, Robert, there's something going on there like that, except that to me, that is as blue as blue gets. And if I were to morph that in either, uh, we're in develop mode, I can actually prove that that's blue just by, uh, how, how about how about now? Anybody see a white and gold dress or is it blue and gold? Um, I think most people would see blue and gold and we know if I take something, yeah, if I take something that's white and I bump the saturation up on it, it will, white is white. It doesn't matter how much saturation you put on. So for whatever reason, when this is back and desaturated, it falls into a color and probably what's going on, it's part backlight of the computers and part of our perception of the color balance that it's in. And that's why I wanted to bring this up because this becomes really important. One thing that is probably biologically really important to us is to see skin tones. I, I don't have a skin tone on here, but I, I just wanted to make make things simple. Uh, an apple, because we can all uh, we can all agree that if we have an apple in front of us, and so just imagining here, we've got an apple, 
and it's sunset, that apple is red. When it is gray out, the uh, so like a, like a, a gray cloudy day, the apple is still red to us. The apple's red, and we know that as a fruit, it's ripe. If I were to take a picture of a gray card and not adjust white balance on my camera, if I were to take this a picture of a gray card under like a, an old light bulb, an incandescent light bulb, this gray would come up as orange. And if I were to take it outside on a gray day and not adjust the white balance on my camera, this would come out as blue. And that's important because if we have that kind of change on this gray card, if, if our eyeballs weren't able to adapt, uh, part, part eye, mostly brain, if our brain weren't able to adapt, we wouldn't know that the apple was red. And that becomes important because we want to eat, uh, we, we, want, we want to eat ripe fruit. More importantly, if I were to take that to skin tone, it's very important for us to know, or certainly in the past, whether somebody's ill. And we're, we're super, super sensitive to this. And you know, when when you when you look at somebody uh, that you know well, you can look at them and go, "Are you feeling okay?" They they look green, like there's there there's a slight change in their skin tone that we're super sensitive to, and you just go like, "Oh, you're not looking so good." And this is really, really minor. So uh, the example I've got of a gray card under those lights, a gray card's not that important to us, but certainly skin tones are are very important to us because that keeps us healthy. It, it, you know, it, it kept us away from the, the sick people in the past. And so that's the theory as to what's going on. Now, one of our strat, so we come up with strategies to be able to get things, I know we'll call it right. And we're going to get rid of that idea of right because we already know that there is no such thing as right because we'll just get confused on almost anything. Does any uh, Kelvin mean anything to everybody here? I'll, I'll go over super quickly. Um, when we talk about color temperature, when we talk about white balance, we're, we're often talking about color temperature. And color temperature would be our best way to describe it. We'll, we'll call it we'll call it warmth. And it's it's a little backwards on temperatures, but we'll call incandescent lights, old 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 style light bulbs, really warm. And they're somewhere down here. They're in the twenty seven hundred K range. I just says 3,200. My experience, 2,700. Um, daylight, they've lift, listed as 5,500 on here. And, and we often think about this because we've seen this number so much. Uh, again, it's a, it's a lie. It depends where you live uh, and what time of year it is. So th this is a moving number. Uh, cloudy days are a lot more blue. And believe it or not, a clear blue sky is very blue, but we don't often see a clear blue sky because a clear blue sky often has a sun in it. And we're we're going to talk about when that comes up because when when you end up with a clear blue sky without sun, wow, your color temperature is miles off. We look at the settings on our camera. Who here sticks with auto white balance? I, I often do. And I will change that. Uh, Let's let's throw down in the chat who shoots raw and who shoots JPEG. Let's just find that out for a second. Uh, raw obviously being the safest one. Well, you know, most of us for sure. Good. We've seen both raw. We got some J Marv JPEG. Um, awesome, you guys. Okay. So here here's the deal. This is probably the most important thing when it comes to shooting raw or JPEG is I mentioned before that, uh, where's our sensor? Our sensor, our sensor only sees black and white and it's got filters in front of it. When you record a raw photo, it's basically recording the black and white 
and the color information gets added later. When you shoot a JPEG photo, the color information is done right away. And what that means is it if you don't get your white balance right when you're shooting when you're shooting a JPEG, it's almost impossible to get right after the fact. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say right. It's almost impossible to change to a pleasing way if it's unpleasing when you look at it. How about that? That's That would be the really good way to describe it. Okay, so I will often change my white balance to what we'd call a correct one. And when I say correct, it, if I'm in the sunshine, I'm going to shoot with a sunshine white balance. I'm going to look for that little sunshine. We'll, we'll get more advanced in, in a few minutes. If I'm shooting in inside under tungsten light, in fact, we, we don't often shoot under tungsten light anymore. We're, we're almost all shooting under LEDs and they're all over the place. I think we've started to decide that we like warm LEDs because it feels nicer at night. And so we're getting back to this like 27 to 2700 to 32 100 uh, K look. If you were to shoot tungsten outside, it would look very blue and wrong. But under like inside light, this is going to look. This is going to make that gray gray. And basically, what our white balance is trying to do is take a gray and keep it gray. Here's, yeah, we're going to do bad news again. What's the good news? What's the bad news? It can go wrong and. For all, all the people working with uh, RAW, I mean, let me throw this in later, am I? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this in a, a little later. Let, let, I, I often get in the weeds, let's simplify. Okay, if I am shooting this one, what kind of setting would I be? Let's, let's throw that in the chat. I, I I could you know I could obviously keep it on auto. Um, shade. Shades probably uh, shades a good answer. Uh, daylight. Okay. Uh, looks cloudy. Auto. Yep. Auto. Auto is actually a good choice for this one. But. If I were to choose, and sometimes it's good to choose, I would go with cloudy. And what all of these are doing, pretty much all of these are just adjusting the color temperature axis so that, let's, let's talk about what that is. Let's go into, let me get develop up here. There we go. White balance is made up of two axes. There's a color temperature one, which goes blue to yellow and a tint one, uh, which we'll talk about later. When you click on color temperature, all it's doing in your camera is sliding. Oh, let's go back to there and is sliding this slider here. So that we either make things warmer or cooler. That making sense to everybody? That's yep. all that's all that happens when you select any of those settings there. Uh, the, the one difference would be if you've got um, a fluorescent on your camera. And honestly, fluorescents are kind of a thing of the past and I've never ever seen it work. Uh, there's so many different styles of fluorescent tubes. I've never gotten a white balance to work under it. I, I would definitely manual white balance. And we're going we're gonna to talk about manual white balancing too. Okay, so I would go cloudy with that one. But it depends on what you want it to look like, honestly. You might like warmer toned greens. You might want to say that it's cold there. And so there's no right answer. It's like, how how does it feel to you? That would be my suggestion is it's, it's like, what am I trying to say about this? I'm trying to say that it's an enjoyable walk through the forest in the rain. I might push it a little bit warmer. Uh, it was a really cold day and I wanna talk about how cold it was. I might push it a little bluer. These are decisions that you get to make. 
Here, let me move this. Let's go to this one. This picture overall look a little bit on the blue side to you guys. It, it does to me. It's got a blue cast to it for sure. I don't know. <laughs> A uh, quick question for you guys. You guys see a green line there, or is it just on my screen? No, I see a green green line through there. I don't know where it came from, but it shouldn't be. Uh, yes. Okay, you guys too. Sorry, everybody. It's not on the photos. Oh, yeah, two green lines. Exactly. Uh, uh, I think I probably did something in Zoom on like a whiteboard or something to circles. I don't know how to clear it. Sorry. We're just going to have to live with that. Okay. This would be my would have been my choice for this to make it uh, because I wanted to say that it was a blue day. I can tell you, remember when I said that it's unusual to see clear blue sky without a sun? That would fall under this one where the sun was behind me under heavy cloud. And so the light was coming from above and very bright blue. It's in fact, very difficult to correct that out. The, uh, so you can see as I warm it, it doesn't become pleasing. It just it just doesn't turn into anything. One of the reasons for that is our limited sensors. We've got uh, a red, green, and a blue sensor. And if I'm only sending blue light, the red and green sensors are going to be very, very dark. And so under those conditions, you're, you're going to have a hard time correcting it. Like I can correct it to how maybe I saw it which might have been, as a guess, a little like that. But I liked the, the blue nature of it. And, and we'll see different things at different times. One of the things that I would suggest to you guys is that when you're color correcting, it's very difficult to do on a laptop. If you have a laptop in a room where you've got light coming in, just like... Going back to this guy over here, it's very hard, very difficult to understand color when you've got sunshine pouring into a room or you've got colored walls and you've got things mixing. I'm on purpose. It sounds really boring, but this is, this is the my edit suite that I work in. And I work in a room that is gray, like a gray card. I actually went and got paint mixed for uh, a, a neutral gray. So my walls are neutral gray in here. And I keep, uh, I, I've got like a 32 inch screen in front of me and I keep that screen gray in the background as well. And I'd, I'd suggest doing that. So if you've got any way to adjust your backgrounds, that's a, a great idea. Like, it, you know, it's nice to see a scene and everything in a background, but it, uh, it'll, it'll mess with your eyeballs when you go to color something. This guy here, what would I set my camera to, to get, a, we'll call it a pleasing, a pleasing rendition of this photo. What, what would you set your camera to? Sunset. And I can tell you for sure on this one, auto is not going to be your friend. Anybody in the chat want to throw in what you're? Higher Kelvin value, that's, oh, now I'm, I wonder if I can show you guys this. Let me just see if I can figure out a way to, I hadn't, it just occurred to me, if I can set my camera to Kelvin and maybe we can do a dual camera thing. All those are coming in, higher Kelvin. Oh, it, I was stalling, waiting for you guys to write something in. <laughs> uh, and you know what? I, I guess uh, stick with fifty five hundred from Chris. All okay. You know what? We got we got two good choices there. Okay, sticking with fifty five hundred. If we go back and look at this guy a second, if we tell something's daylight, and the, su the sun starts setting on it it's going to make it warm. It's gonna make the picture warmer than it should be. Where things go wrong, cloudy to the warm scene, yeah, yeah. I, I'd be with Allie on this and Gary and 
uh, and, and maybe Chris, anytime that I am perceiving a color temperature shift, meaning if I'm enjoying the warm light when I look at somebody and go, that looks nice. I like the way that looks. I know that I don't want to, I, I don't want to leave my camera on auto because the camera's job on auto is to correct. So if we were to look at this apple here, we can say just based on how soft the light is, that that's a cloudy day out there and it looks like an apple. So the auto white balance has corrected that because that, if, if it was uncorrected, would be blue. These apples are in complete, that's a, that's a sunset apple. That's a cloudy day apple. They look like apples. I mean, this one does look a little bit sunset. The other way we can tell the sunset is because the sun is so far down the apple, it's not on top of the apples, right? The way the shadows are falling, we can tell this is sunset. If we set our camera to 5,600K and the color temperature is actually down here, it's going to warm it and give our apples a warm glow. If we want to give our apples an extra warm glow, we start pushing our color temperature on our camera up, pushing it away from what it actually is because it's just adding a warming filter. So the, I know it's, it's kind of confusing. If our gray card, if we're taking, if we've got our gray card here and it's 7K on a cloudy day and we need to push it down to here, we add a whole bunch of warmth to get it to neutral gray, right? And so it seems a little backwards, but you go the opposite way. It's probably a terrible way of explaining it. We're just going to do this a bunch of times till it comes clear. It's, 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 I have not ever figured out a great way to explain it where it doesn't come out like mud. Let's go to a sunset. I'm going to jump way ahead. Here's a problem. Here's a problem picture. What? That's an awful skin tone. I, I pulled this one off of Unsplash. So this is, this is a JPEG. And I don't know if you guys would agree with me. If I am just looking at her skin tone, she looks kind of blue. You guys seeing that 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 is not a happy looking skin tone. It's just like, a, you know, it's, it's totally fine, but it's just like, wow. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to call her blue. What's going on here is that is the result of auto white balance on a sunset. I mean, I, I don't know what this person's white balance was. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's in the info, but almost certainly they took a picture of this girl here had their camera on auto white balance. It looked at the whole scene and it did its best to correct. And all auto white balance is ever doing is trying to make a gray look like a gray under every condition. So it was just like, okay, I'm going to imagine my camera's going, I'm going to imagine what gray should look like. And if I want to get that gray, gray, I have to do that. <laughs> it's just like, wow, you really botched that camera. So if I were to go in and I want to shoot for her skin tone, I got to warm it way up. As I warm it up, I don't, can you guys see that she is now a little bit green? Yeah. Okay. This is where, this is where it, it gets tricky. Any, anybody have any ideas why she might be green? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Greeny yellow. Yeah. There's, um, and so like when we think of color temperature, When I warm somebody up, it should become more pleasing, but it's got this yellow that's just not pleasing. And I, I can't remember, can't remember who it's attributed to. Someone uh, we're, we're talking 1800s and 1900s did uh, a whole, whole book on color and how important it is to get your yellows right. And and that, that comes back to that idea that we want to see good skin tone again, and we're very sensitive to it. Uh, Chris there, yeah, the tint is wrong. Uh, any ideas why the tint is wrong? Anybody want to volunteer that? I, the, the tint is wrong 
because she's standing in a green field lit by a blue sky. We know that on a clear sky at sunset, which this is, the light on this side of her body right now is blue on the top and green underneath because she's standing in a green field. And so the two lights that are lighting her are a green, a huge green from the bottom and a blue from the top. So to correct out our green, we would start to add magenta and then voila, look at that. She starts to have a skin tone somewhere in there. If I lighten that up, we'll become more sensitive to it, but bam, there's, there's a skin tone. Auto white balance is never going to get that one. Never, ever. Let's go have a, let's go have a look at why. I think I might have to. So for anybody that wants to get correct um, or as correct as you can get, this is, this is my preferred method on a shoot. If I'm, if I'm doing a commercial shoot, uh, if I'm doing a fashion shoot, I will always have a color checker in. Uh, I'll have a, I, I have a different style of this color checker. Um, you don't need that. This one, in fact, this one here, these three squares are in this one. This one just has more information. So if you look up color checker on Amazon, you're going to see something like that. Unless you're shooting video and have to match cameras, you're never going to use this one. But man, I use this one all the time. And here is the reason. I think I am sharing, am I sharing my whole desktop? Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm going to switch over to Final Cut for a second. Okay, here is, here's that color checker. Okay, over here, this is kind of like a histogram. Uh, you guys don't have to memorize this at all. There's definitely no test on this at the end of the day. But this line up here, um, on the blue, the green, and the red channels, that's this white here. This gray here falls there. And anybody know what percentage a gray card is? Anybody use gray cards? It's old school. We've got 18s. Oh, look at you guys with your 18s. Um, that would be a that'd be a digital take on that. Uh Oh, the, the oldest school of that would be 70%, 70% gray card in, in the digital world. Uh, it, it'll be an 18. Yeah. Uh, and then down here is the blacks. And the reason it's not a solid line down here is part of it's probably this gray around the outside. And the fact that there's probably noise in this black and we're seeing a bunch of noise. And so when we go to white balance, what I wanted to show you is things can, can go wrong even when you use, let me switch to a gray card. So if I were to white balance off a gray card, you would think that that would just be right. Like I'd get it right. right? And, and so some of you that are shooting with raw, we have like a, a neutral color in there that we take a neutral balance off of. Like, so if I were in develop here, I could go and click on here and get a neutral, right? And that gets our color back. I don't know if you've ever noticed, sometimes it goes wrong. And the reason it's going wrong is if I come over to this color checker, does that color checker look totally wrong to anybody or is it okay? For me, for me, it, it falls into, okay, if I'm being really, if I'm really concentrating on it, I can see that it's a tiny bit off. But overall, it's okay. But I can tell you, if I were to apply that white balance to a person, you'd go, oh man, something is wrong. And this is the reason I, I wanted to bring you over here is because this is, this is how things can go wrong with just a, a white balance card. And so even, even when you go to the trouble of manually white balancing, it doesn't really mean you're going to get it. So if we look at our center line, our center line is all good. It's neutral. What, what white balance really means is whether it's gray or, or white or any tone in between, that the, the numbers are the same. It's got the same amount of red, the same amount of green, and the same amount of blue, I, I, meaning neutral. So whether it's 23s across the board, or in this case, 66s across the board, that would be neutral. It's always trying to neutralize. 
if we take a look up here though, if I look at my whites, I've got way more red than green and blue. And if I look at my blacks, I've got way more red than green and blue. And if I start correcting for those, well, that just throws everything all off. I actually can't, I can't get a white balance to align those at all. And the more I bounce around, the more I throw it off. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. Sometimes when you go to get a, a manual white balance after the fact in ACDC, you're clicking on stuff and it just keeps on looking worse and worse. And that's what's going on is that different values of lightness can have different levels of tone. And we will do a more advanced version of this one day where I will show you how to color correct everything so that all the values line up and it's, it's actually quite possible to, to do that. But what I wanted to show you was that even like I could show you manual white balancing. I pretty much never use it. And the reason I never use it is because of this, because it can still go wrong. So we're just going back to practicing what is pleasing. Which brings me to this image. Is the white balance correct on this image? I'm gonna throw down in the chat. No. Yeah, you know, lots of no's. Yeah, lots of no's. Um, correct. The the white balance is not correct. We got lots of too, uh, Chris, too warm but pleasing. Yeah, this uh, this was a, a shoot I did, and I wanted it to have that uh, late 1970s vibe, that vibe we get from looking at old film and it's aged and the paper it's on is aged and started, yeah, hippie vibe. Looks like a hippie vibe from the color. What does temperature scale of mine relate to Kelvin's? Okay, uh, we can answer that in here. So yeah, this one is obviously too warm. Uh, and in fact, when we were talking about the multiple bands, if I were just to adjust the color temperature, you'll see that I never really come up with anything pleasing, right? Um, as I slide through this, it's not like she ever gets a good skin tone back. And that's because the multiple bands are pushed. And that would be known as color grading. And it gets very tricky to cancel this out without uh, a color checker. There's probably no reason to cancel it out because I just really like the look of that. One of the reasons that her color is going to be off is she's in a very orangey car. Um, it, it's actually, uh, and is it, this is old, uh, an old interior that's kind of like orangey magenta. It's something you would never see anymore, but certainly uh, throwing colors. I've got too much green in there now. There we go. Uh, I'm going to answer Phil's question. What does temperature scale of, of the plus 100, how does it, how does it relate to Kelvin? Uh, when you're seeing uh, the, the numbers, one like th that have like hundreds in them plus 100 minus 100 you're really just looking at a reference number that honestly doesn't mean anything it's just a digital number uh i think yeah i was gonna say uh acdc likes to use a scale that goes to 100 uh a, a, a adobe uh, depending on their mood, you, likes to use a scale that goes to 100. Sometimes they'll do a scale that goes zero to 255. Um, it depends what software you use. Some some will use 255, and that's old school from uh, trying to be accurate with 8-bit computer numbers. Uh, I prefer zero to 100, and basically, it doesn't mean anything other than a reference. One, like it, it's like the the scale going zero to ten on an amplifier. You know, 10, 10 being the loudest, unless you have an amp that goes to eleven. And then uh, Marv, if we correct for skin, will we throw off the color of the eyes? Yes, absolutely. If <laughs> uh, 
any anything that we do uh, change it changes the color. Uh, here was a concept I wanted to to get for you guys, and this is coming up in next picture because this is con this was confounding to me. Where is that image? This image here. What setting would you use if you were if you were faced with if if you were in this place? It's a little saturated on my monitor. There we go. If you were here, what camera setting would you use color temperature wise? Let's throw that in the chat. Blue sky. Mm hmm. Daylight, shade, auto if around midday, daylight. Okay, uh, I can tell you all of these answers are right. And the reason they're right is because there's no correct, especially on this image, there's no correct. But what we wanna do is think about our intent. And we can, if we're shooting in raw, we can do it when we shoot it or after the fact. I prefer to do it when I'm shooting because I am very affected by what I see in my camera or in the eyepiece. And if my color temperature is way off and the images don't look pleasing to me, uh, I'm just not vibing with the images. I'm not excited about them. If they look pleasing to me, I get excited. I take more pictures. So I, I want to get it right. Plus, I want to get a recording because we don't have, remember, we don't have color memory. My only chance at color memory is to get it, if, if I want to get it close, is to get it as close as I can in the moment. For this, my approach would be sunshine. That's going to make my foreground uh, a little warm. It's going to get this area right. Oh, overall, we're, we're looking at a finished picture where this is a little warm. And of course, this one had like tons of uh, shadows opened up. The answer is there's not a right answer. And the other confusing part about this is that in real life, when you're there, and that's why I put this picture in, your eye is going to change just like your eye will change in exposure so that you can see down here plain as day and you can see up here plain as day your eye will change its color temperature setting based on what it sees. That's super frustrating because when we take something with a wide angle lens, so this was shot with a wide angle, and then we put it on a screen in front of us, we're collapsing this really wide array of color temperatures that are in this image into a small area where we can see the color temperatures in a much smaller space. You're literally never gonna get it right. There, there, it's impossible to get it right because one, there's no right answer and our eye is going to adjust to the image on this small screen much different than it will in real life. Super frustrating, I know, but it, it's, it's a limitation of our, of our sensor up here. And so the best you're ever gonna do is pleasing. What's my approach? My approach, as I said, would be to try and get it right when I'm shooting. So my goal, when I'm, if, I, if I were faced with this, I'm not gonna shoot auto. I am going to shoot either daylight uh, because this, th this is warm, or if I wanna make it extra warm, I'll head to cloudy. This one's close. Uh, I pulled this off on Splash. Um, her skin tone is warm. What, what is she lit by? If you wanna throw that in the comments, what's, what's lighting her at the moment? Reflector, yeah, yeah, someone got that. Yeah, that's solar flare. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, so big lens flare in the back. Um, it might be real. It might not be. I suspect it's an enhanced sun flare. Uh, Dan totally got that right. She should be in shade and she's not. She's being lit by either a white bounce card. Totally recommend those. Uh, best thing you'll ever spend $60 on uh, to, to get better photos. I don't know if you guys can see it on your end. To me, when I look at the warmth on her, it doesn't look warm. You know, when we look, when I was warming something up earlier and it just kind of, it looked yellow instead of warm. And we've already decided that color temperature goes cold to warm. Anytime you see something and it looks yellow instead of warm, it usually means it's got green in it. And it's just on the green side of yellow. And so if I add some magenta, all of a sudden those yellows are going to warm up. And so I could push the color temperature and make her yellow and it'll never become pleasing. The pleasing often happens on sunsets when, as you add in magenta, that's just a, a little bit of experience there for you. Um, oh, here's a confounding one for you. What do you set your camera for there? This one, I, I promise you, this confounded me. I, I uh, in the in the comments, uh, I use three different camera makes. Each has its own definition of scene. The best would be in my HP using mountain. Oh, that, that was back on the mountain ones. Yeah, and there's probably some truth to to that. And AI can help you with it. I and and I think probably that that's what's going to help us most in in the near future is. AI correct scene correction because these need multiple corrections. What what would you guys use in this situation? And and what what I'm really asking is what problems are we faced with? Because that's what you want to correct. And and whether it's in post or whether you're shooting daylight because of the sky. Uh, daylight's going to be, yeah, daylight's going to be a good choice. I can tell you the auto is going to be a terrible choice. Um, a, a twilight. So, uh, twilight would be, uh, like a cloudy day. Um, when it's going extra blue, uh, also a pretty good choice because when you see this sign here, okay. Th these are our icons for, most of us have a similar icon to this on our cameras. What this house, it's the weirdest one. Uh, what they're really saying with this shadow. Okay. So this would be cloudy day. So clouds in the sky, that makes sense. Shadow. What they're saying there is that it's a sunny day, but the sun is blocked. And so now your subject is being lit by a blue sky that's coming from here. So sun's over here. You got your person here. They're being lit by a bright blue sky. That is your bluest blue or clear blue sky. And so that's going to come up in either man-made situations or that situation where she's lit by a clear blue sky on the front. Uh, which we can't see, so that doesn't matter. These rocks are lit, uh, are lit by a, a clear blue sky. They're very red rocks. Uh, anybody any spent any time in the red rocks? This this was really like my first trip into into really red rocks, and one of the things that struck me as amazing was when, as we'd be hiking down, so and you've got to look at your feet the whole time, and you don't see any more sky. Um, the red cones in my eyes were fully saturated and so much so that when I looked at my skin, my skin looked bright green, like, uh, like Martian, Martian green. And I was like, that is crazy. I was like, I wonder whether that's where green Martians come from on the red planet was that experience of someone being in enveloped in red like that till all, all your brain sees outside of red is green. So I, the answer for, for this one is going to be either daylight or uh, shade, uh, cloudy day. I mean, it's clearly not a cloudy day, uh, but if you were to head towards that shade look being lit by a bright blue sky, she is not lit by a bright blue sky. 
she's lit by red reflector, but this red ground is lit by the blue sky. If I correct for that, that's going to give me my correct color of ground. And in real life, this ground is what's lighting her. If I get this correct, I get her correct. Does that make sense? So sometimes it's like sitting back and looking at it because I, I tell you, if you if you take a white balance tool and start bouncing around here and you are even even on her white hat, you are not going to get anything pleasing. And so it's just like, what the heck am I going to use? And so it's just thinking your way through it. What what is my light source? What is the color temperature of my light source? What's it bouncing off of? Most of the time, you're going to do well if you keep this in mind after the fact that shadows mean you're being lit by a bright blue light. Cloudy day is sunshine out under the sun under clouds, sunny we all get, and tungsten we get. Okay, I will wrap it up with this idea that color temperature is made from our two axes, right? We've got our cool to warm, and we've got our tint. Until I got the hang of moving tint around, I never got happy with white balance. I would move this around, and sunsets would always be off. Both of these are really important. Color temperature, when we think of white balance, that's the one that gets moved the most. This is the one where you'll get your pleasing skin tones from. Reviewing quickly, this guy, it's a very blue scene. He is, we can see that there's a bright blue sky up there. This is totally that look of him over in the shadow, right? If I were to switch my white balance, uh, it only says a shot. If I were to switch my white balance to the, the shady house, his color is going to get corrected. And then lastly, we, we, we've talked about this one before. Often when you're shooting sunsets, no matter what you shoot, you're not, if you don't have good cloud cover, you're not going to get an awesome orange sky. And the fix for that is literally pour on some of that guy, a little magenta, and then bump your saturation. And all of a sudden, wow, magic. Did it look like that in real life? No, I can assure you. <laughs> it's not my photo, but I know that it didn't look like that <laughs> in, in real life. I went on Unsplash and it looked it looked like this. This one, why is it not changing? Oh, because I already corrected it. There you go. I went on Unsplash and it looked like that there. And, and it's just like, to me, that's more pleasing. And the goal for me as a photographer is sometimes it's accuracy. If I'm thinking accuracy, I'm using a gray card. If I'm thinking pleasing, and that's where I want to be most of the time. And I am using these two axes. If anybody's got any questions, throw them down in the chat. I'll see what I can answer. But otherwise, uh, that's it. Uh, as far as this style of workshop, when we've got a, a few less people, um, I definitely like to open up the floor more. And uh, so anybody liking this style of workshop, that's a little bit science, lots of photography, and we're going to be heading into my studio in the near future and actually working on cameras. Um, Join us in the premium section. We're keeping it super cheap so that we can have lots of people learning. Other than that, you know, post your photos. For every post, if you comment thrice, comment three times on other people's, we'll make the, make the community great. Uh, and last message on community. <clears throat> we have a critiquing session a section and a sharing section. Let's try not to critique in the sharing section. Sharing sections, just cheering people on for making the world a better, more beautiful place. Other than that, you guys have a fantastic Easter weekend. Thank you for joining me. And I'm going to go spend some time with family.
Take some photos, share them. I will see you on the community page. Cheers and have a fantastic day. Happy Easter, everybody.